Okay, it looks like it's working. Sorry, I had a bit of trouble with my Mevo here, so I'm just making sure I am in fact connected. Hi everyone. Um, this is um, my <coughs> attempt to procrastinate this afternoon, and uh, I thought I would take a few minutes just to go over um, some of the uh, exciting new additions to my library of photo books that I received this holiday season. Uh, I spent probably a good couple hours or so over the holidays rearranging my uh, photo books with uh, the obvious sidetrack that the minute I pull one out I gotta sit there and look at it and I realized I've, um, my love of photo books um, is uh, a testament to the passion I have for photography and uh, I thought I, I was gonna you know do a big blog post or you know Facebook post and talk about these books but then I thought in the interest of um, you know, doing more video, I thought I'd perhaps just talk about them. So the two I wanted to talk about are um, Sheila Metzner from Life. I'm just making sure you can see that. <coughs> and the obvious Annie Leibovitz 2005 2016. Um, I got both of these from my family for Christmas, so I'm internally grateful. Um, upon figuring out where they ordered them from, um, I will say they came from Amazon at a slightly cheaper price. Uh, the first one I wanted to talk about was Sheila Metzner, who is a uh, fine art and editorial photographer who, um, I'm just going to be watching the phone here so you can see them. Um, <clears throat> Sheila Metzner was part of a group of photographers that I admired back in the 80s when I was in college. Um, uh, I think of Sheila Metzner, Sarah Moon, and uh, Deborah Turberville as sort of the three women who were sort of doing some really interesting stuff with fashion and editorial imagery back in the 80s. Very sort of almost kind of a romantic, opulent look that was very indicative of the era and it kind of spoke to my fascination with the photo succession movement. Um, when I was in college, we obviously had a... Um, study the history of photography and the photo succession movement was kind of you know spearheaded by Stieglitz and Steichen and that's where um, you see all these kind of really kind of moody um, images that almost evoke a, a classical painting vibe um, and so these these three photographers seem to sort of capture the spirit of that and then update it and transform it into something new um, Sheila Metzner, actually, as you can tell by this image here, it's a little tough to see. I, I suggest you kind of Google her name and look at the images on Google for probably the best representation of them. And I've earmarked a couple of images I wanted to show you. Um, she was renowned for this kind of very distinct uh, color. Um, so much so that I wanted it so bad when I used to see her images in magazines I was like that's the that's the that's the version of color that I wanted to do and uh, Back then there weren't a lot of resources to kind of find out what what she was doing But um, I think I remember seeing like one line in American photo about how she had a um, Sorry, it's a bit reflective there. She had a a a French family doing a proprietary print process that nobody seemed to know and the, and the family kept it very secretive. And um, so it was, uh, this is a very 80s photo for you. You know, so at one point I wanted to, um, I thought maybe it was tied to autochromes because it kind of has a muted palette like, like autochromes, which are probably some of the most early examples of, of color photography. So back then I was doing like gum bichromate and cyanotypes and stuff and I thought, oh, um, autochrome is another alternative process. I wanted to figure it, figure it out. But the more research I did on autochromes, the more I realized that um, it was an incredibly complicated uh, process um, with, I can't even remember the chemistry that was used. So I kind of gave up on trying to, you know, backwards engineer this style of photography. Um, of course, now with modern technology, um, it's a few clicks of the mouse. But back then, it was it really stood out in terms of um, 
the mood and the the green and just just the the muted color palette that she was so renowned for here's another example of some fashion um, so when it was announced uh, this season that she was publishing a book a retrospective book of her work it, it immediately went on my wish list and I wanted it badly so I'm so happy I got it for Christmas I haven't had a chance to read all the copy um, she does spend a lot of uh, time sort of talking about um, her family life. Her family is huge. I believe it's eight children or something like that. And a lot of her children end up being subjects, very similar to somebody like, say, Sally Mann. Um, so um, I want to read a bit more about it. I've just had a chance to look at the images. They're amazing. And I'm so glad that this is now part of my library. The other book I wanted to talk about, obviously, was the the sort of the photo book of the season which was this big one by Annie Leibovitz it has a plastic um, sleeve over top of the cover so you're going to see a lot of reflection on the cover here so it's kind of an Adam and Eve motif here on the on the cover um, except for that uh, except for the book on Annie Leibovitz at work and that that other book she did where she went out and just photographed places and things rather than people, because that was I found that in a discount bin. Those are the only two um, books of Annie Leibovitz that I have in my library, which is kind of stunning to me because it, when I think back over the course of my career, I, I've been following her evolution as a photographer and sort of responding to it all through my career as well. Um, like I said, as I said in my other video, video I started way back in... In the 80s and it was around then when when uh, Annie really started to lift off in terms of editorial photography and coming out with that style that she was renowned for so um, it influenced me greatly and I'm actually kind of surprised that this is sort of the the first time I've gotten a big Annie book in my library um, and it, as, as the title suggests they're images from 2005 to 2016 and um, if you followed her career uh, along the way, you'll notice some of her work actually has, her, her shooting style has changed. It's become um, a lot more, I think it's a lot simpler, maybe in some cases a little more powerful. And of course, um, she always has that, that unique color palette that everybody uh, admires. I'm just trying to find a really good example of that. Um, you know, and a lot of this stuff isn't all that isn't all that um, elaborate in terms of setup or execution, technically speaking. But what when she, when she does do it, it's well done. You know, even just something like this to to you know shoot the mayor in in the middle of this kind of scenario is um, you know to have the I guess the creative courage to kind of step back and and capture all that environment is what sort of set her up, set her apart um, I love all of these photos that she does these sort of really sort of muted um, boy it's really tough to see with the light sorry these very sort of muted um, palettes that she brings to it here's another perfect example it's gonna be really tough to see of course She's one of those people you can Google and see all these images. Anyways, as you can tell, this book is substantial. It's quite uh, big, and um, the reproduction on it is is actually very well done. Um, I don't know who's publishing this, but uh, it's um, definitely a welcome addition to the library. The uh, Sheila Metzner one is I'm just grabbing it again. Was from uh, Rizzoli. And as you can see, it's got kind of a linen cover. I wasn't entirely, you know, blown away by the by the by the reproduction or the quality of the prints here. Um, it's kind of a, a little bit flatter, but it does lend itself to the to the images. Um, so that's basically all there is to it. I could go on and on about how these two different uh, photographers have influenced my career, but. Um, I think I'll just leave it there for now. As you can see, I've got lots of other photo books behind me, and I thought 
you know, I stood back and looked at them all, and I realized I've got some amazing um, books that I love. And what better way to uh, share that with you than to just, you know, do one of these quick videos. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, if I'm uh, motivated enough, I'll do more of these in the future. Um, did any of you get a good, good photo book? Or any any book, actually. As you know, I'm an I'm a avid reader. I, I love books photo books, or regular books. So if you've got some great books over the holiday season, I want to hear about it. If you have some amazing photo books that you think are um, are worth mentioning, please put them in the comments below. Um, and that's all I was going to do for today. If you have any other thoughts or comments, please uh, leave them below. Thanks so much for watching and we'll talk to you soon.